I am Jimmy Bolt, and my character's name is Marion One. The, the way we actors usually get cast, although it's, it's very different, it was very different then to as it is now. But um, <clears throat> the role of Marion came up and was obviously sent round to agents, and my agent um, submitted me to be, you know, for, for the role. And uh, I got a, a, a I got an audition, reading the casting, and went in. And in those days, you went into a taxi office and met the producer and the director. And they told me what the role was about. They'd also biked over the script so that I could have a look at it. And they told me what the role was about, and it sounded huge fun. You know, they said that Vaseline's character had had three wives, and they were all called Marion. And he was on the third one, and I was the first one. And they felt that they'd ever meet the second one. And that I had come back, partly because he had me money, but partly because maybe she thought there was a chance. And in a way, she also really, really had a sort of bit of a vengeance thing against them. Anyway, it sounded like a fun role. And um, so I remember doing the reading, and I remember them saying to me when I got up to leave, I got up to leave and I said, thank you so much for seeing me. And they said, it's been a pleasure. What are you doing on May the 19th? And I said, oh, well, God knows. Or there's something the 19th, May the 19th, I'm sure it was. And I said, I don't know. And they said, good, because you're going to be here doing this. And I was like, yes. And I'd sort of, I didn't know Mark, but he knew my agent. So I kind of knew of him. And obviously he'd watched London's Burning, so I knew the role he played. Well, Marion was, you know, obviously been married and they divorced. She got nothing from him. Um, but her character was a little bit of a stirrer. I think she quite enjoyed winding um Roland up so she was a bit of a stirrer but she in the end did have a good part I remember being a little bit nervous because it was you know it was such a popular program then and in terms of its storytelling and camera work and all the, the stunts that they did you know it was groundbreaking and it was massive um, so I remember being a bit nervous. I was very excited um, because I loved playing Marion. I loved being a bit of a bitch. It was really, really great fun to do. Helen Blizzard, who played Marion 3, was wonderful to work with. And, um, and we had a lot of fun. Me, her and Mark had a lot of fun doing that, for, doing that first episode. You know, when he comes back in. And she's slapping him about and saying, I tell you what offends me. You've got the moral right. And my character just there really enjoying seeing him squirm. Um, but it was just, it was huge fun. It was like a, it was like being part of a really big family, you know. And I slotted in really, really well. And it was thoroughly enjoyable. We had a lot of laughs. Mark was great. I mean, and I'm not, I'm not you know, I, he really was fantastic. Um, obviously, he was a very popular character, so he had the sense of that. He was funny um, and was very, very helpful, you know, in terms of helping me ease my way in, sometimes suggesting little things that would make the scene work better. Very professional, but really, really good fun in the right way, you know, not time-wasting fun. Um, but he knew that character. He knew Vaseline inside out, so it really made it easier for me. Um, and he he just did lots. I mean, when you watch it, you see him doing lots of sort of reacting. And I was watching it last night actually, and it just it just it really made me laugh. He's a very very good actor and very good at just bringing that, keeping it real, but bringing in that light touch. So yeah, he, he was great. He was great. Because obviously you can see that when she arrives in that first episode, she actually is walking along, you know, approaching the door of a block of flats. But do you know, I'm going to be really honest with you, I can't remember if it was an actual flat for all of it. I seem to remember later on when Marion seduces Vaseline. I seem to remember that may have been on a set because of where you have to be able to move the cameras. So... 
but I'm going to be honest with you, it's a very long time ago. <laughs> um, I think it was a mixture, studio and location. Um, <clears throat> well, it was bittersweet. You know, it was sad to get rid of Vaseline, both, it, I think, for the series, but also as an actress, because you know that you're not, you're not going to be there anymore and neither are you. Um, so I, I remember, no, I might be getting confused here now, because I can't remember if that episode was the same episode as the christening. Um, because the baby gets christened. And I can't, I was trying to look through it last night, but, um, you know, obviously Marion had really ensconced herself in their house. Uh, uh, but the whole thing, because of, I think because of the, the actors playing all of the firemen were, were a really, you know, tight knit band. And when they seem like that happens, there is really emotion because they are saying goodbye to an actor. Is very popular and they're going to leave. So my memories are of turning up to the cemetery, which I think was somewhere in South East London, and um, <clears throat> how incredible it was that they got the fire thing and they did it absolutely as you would do it. Uh, so that was a big, a big scene because they were all there around the graveside, and then you see them, you know, uh, at the end walking away, and they say, "Oh, he's left his mark," and then and his son, and then. Kathy, who played the female fire officer's name, I can't remember, said, um, and another one, because uh, Marion Wands just told me she's pregnant. <laughs> um, I think there was a little bit of a feeling that I thought, oh, maybe I'll carry on. But no, once Mark was gone, I think it was curtains for me and later curtains for Helen. Um, but I remember it being quite emotional because everybody was going to miss Mark. All those lads were going to miss Mark. He was a huge personality within the company if you like um i remember it was a, quite a sunny day um trying to think of what else i meant it was quite emotional actually because it soon catches on um so yeah bittersweet bittersweet i would say i can remember john reardon being obviously very very professional uh in command but created a wonderful atmosphere and was very considerate of the actors again i think tv has changed quite a lot and then in my memory we had more time you know he was really good at allowing you to play the scenes and when you look at some of those scenes in all of it they're much longer scenes than we get now often on telly uh, you know they really are i was watching the scene Again, in my first episode of us in the kitchen and me and Marion in the kitchen, and it's quite a long scene. So he he gave actors time and um, was open to suggestions, but he ran the ship really well. He was a very very good sort of like you know leader and had lovely energy. Um, well, we were in the eighties. And they always, you know, they, because, you know, I said I'd left my job in Hull and come down. So she wasn't meant to look too rich, but she was meant to look better than the Marion who just had the baby. So that, that difference. So she kept, when I looked at it, I mean, she comes over as quite glamorous, really. I mean, it's quite a shock. <laughs> um, and, and I remember that they made lovely choices and, you know, my makeup was great. There wasn't a lot of difference in many ways between the way that I dressed and the way that Marion dressed because she wasn't particularly tarty. She was um, very office wear. Um, but I can tell you this, in the first episode I was in, and they're in the kitchen in the night and I come in in a dressing gown, that was mine. I said, oh, I've got a dressing gown I'd really like to use for Marion and if you think it's okay, could I wear it? And they said, yeah. And I said, it's kind of long. It's a bit sort of you know, it's not a knee length one, it's a bit sort of um, negligee wear, but not see through, you know, it's a bit glamorous. And they saw it and they said, Oh, it's fantastic. So that was actually mine. So they were, and they were open to suggestions as to, you know, did she wear lots of jewelry? Did she do this? Um, and looking at it last night, I loved the makeup they did. 
it was it was really wonderful makeup yeah not too overdone especially for the 80s when everything was a bit ott um and they made her i think the costume design and the makeup design of marion made her as she was as a character was quite direct and uh you know with a little bit of a spark there so yeah i, I liked what they gave me to wear they did a good job So what they do is they know that I can't remember how long each episode took to film, to be honest, but say each episode took two weeks. And so within that two weeks, a schedule would be made. So all the stuff that would have been done, say in the fire station would have been done over a few days. So it's never in order. And um, all the stuff for me, like all the stuff that was flat based in the flat would have been done over a few days. So they would have booked me to be available for those days that they were going to. And I think it was a busy time because, you know, also, as I said, because John Reardon didn't really rush you, you know, you could really be allowed to work the scenes. And um, so, you know, it would have been, a, I don't know how many days out of two weeks it would have been, but quite a few. And because it was London, it was easy for me um, because it wasn't very far. But again, in those days, you always got a car, so you would be picked up very grand, some lovely big car would turn up outside your little hovel and um, all the neighbours would be wondering what's going on, you know, you'd go out into a big grand car, be driven off and then when it was all done, you know, you'd be driven home. I mean, you you know, we were treated very well uh, because I think also there was a standard that had been set by the first series. Um, but that's the way they worked it, it would be location based. So you would only need to be there when you were in that location. Obviously, some things like the christening or the funeral where everybody's there, then they have to work it again so that everyone is not doing any other scene on that day. And in fact, they, I don't think they ever did film two things at a time. I think everything was done by one director. Whereas, as you know, you know, sometimes with um, nowadays, you know, there'll be a blue unit and a pink unit and they'll be filming the same stuff with different bits of it. And that, that wasn't like that then. It was all done within the two weeks um, with the one director and you know that's how they worked it. I just remembered that even in the most serious bits we had a good you know it was fun and there was nothing that was I mean maybe I'm looking back through rose coloured spectacles but I don't think so. Um, I, I can remember it was a job but, you know, when it was my turn to go in a film, I was over the moon to be doing it. Everyone was really nice. Uh, I don't remember there being any sort of tensions or anything. Everyone was like, you know, on point. Never had anyone struggling for um, lines or wondering what they were doing. It was just all done so well. But unfortunately, it was a very long time ago. And I don't have, I tried to think last night, actually, you know, like, do I have anything really specific I, I suppose really if I was on this the, the, the memory I have the most and the scene I was most nervous about all actors get nervous about doing a sort of bedroom scene and that that was the memory of Mark really being brilliant and making me feel great and taking control of the scene and you know saying no we want a closed set and you know and him really looking after me because you know those things are not easy to do they're really not easy to do. And um, and because she was the, in that scene, she was the seducer, if you like, which you know, was a nervous, excuse me, it was a nervous scene to do. So I have a specific memory of that and everyone being very um, considerate, shall we put it that way, of, of the intimacy of that scene. Um, of course, when you look back on it, it's nothing like the sort of stuff we see now, but at that time, and for me, uh, it was quite a big deal. And that's my specific memory of it, really. Yeah. Um, one of the scenes you're glad to get done and sort of uh, appreciate everyone being really thoughtful. Because, you know, they're all aware that there's an element of um, shyness or awkwardness about the whole thing. And Mark was great because we plotted every, virtually every single move. 
so that nothing was awkward or difficult. And of course, I've got to do the cameras from different angles, so you're doing it again and again, and so it be, becomes a bit like work. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Well, I'm still working as an actress when I'm, uh, and I I keep myself busy with other other my own projects. I do a lot of teaching, um, and I do write and I write. Um, I'm also an award-winning stand-up comedian now. Uh, I won an award called the Silver Stand Up, which is for comedians over fifty-five. But yes, I'm still working. So even during lockdown, I did a theatre project, although it wasn't public called austerity where i was made into a hologram and this was being toured around places people would put on these glasses and i'd be a woman who was thinking about suicide i then did the essex serpent i don't know if you've heard of that but i was in the essex serpent um then after that i think i did oh pennyworth then i've just did a film last year called Ford, and I'm just about to work now on a new series. I can only give you the title because we're not supposed to talk about it, but it's called Joan and it's about a jewel thief. And uh, I play her neighbour. So I've got that. So still managing to keep busy and keep my hand in. Thank you. Have a good day. Cheers. Thanks. Thank you.